I agree with Hillary Clinton. And I didn't think I'd be saying that anytime soon, but recently she said women have legitimate concerns about transgender issues. And they do. The big problem is whenever someone tries to bring up any legitimate concern, you're branded as all of the worst things in the book and people try to cancel you or end your career. Now, I will say it seems like in recent times, that's actually been subsiding a bit because people are growing a bit more resilient, I hope. Like cancel culture seems to be kind of losing out in a certain key areas. Comedians, for instance, Dave Chappelle, you know, made jokes sort of in this, in this area, talked about his friend who praised him for it. Dave Chappelle made a series of very offensive jokes, and many comedians are coming out and saying, you know what, we don't care anymore. So I think, certainly, that it, with, with someone now like Barack Obama coming out saying, you know, this is not activism, not Hillary Clinton saying we got to address these issues, I think we're seeing a pullback. And as much as I am no fan of Hillary Clinton, I give credit where credit is due, always. What she's saying right here, I agree with, and I'll give her respect for it. That, that, that's, what, that's what you should do. You should encourage good behavior. Let's read this story and see what she's actually talking about. Maybe she's wrong. Maybe there's some nuance here I'm missing. The Daily Caller reports, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said in an interview that transgender issues raise a legitimate concern for women. Clinton appeared on BBC Radio 4 with her daughter Chelsea on Tuesday to promote their book, The Book of Gutsy Women, Favorite Stories of Courage and Resilience. And now you see, you see what happens now? She makes these statements and here I am telling you the name of her book. They differed in their answers. When asked about the subject of biological males who identify as transgender, Chelsea Clinton defended the idea that those men can become women, while her mother struck a more cautionary note. I do think there is a legitimate concern about women's lived experience and the importance of recognizing that, and also the importance of recognizing the self-identification of people who identify as transgender, said the elder Clinton woman. This is all relatively new. People are still trying to find the language for it, trying to sort it out. I think in the right mindset, this can be understood, but it's going to take some time. Couldn't have said it better myself. Hey, credit where credit is due. I always, I always say, no matter who it is, be it Trump, be it a former communist, if they're going to come out and do the right thing and say the right thing, you give them credit for it. And if Hillary Clinton's going to come out right now and say, look, it's new, it's going to take time, we should talk about it. I agree with that. Absolutely. I'm willing to bet, though, they're going to call Hillary Clinton far right. <laughs> Now, she is not super far left. I hate it when they call her a centrist because it's like, dude, there's, there's a big difference between your average centrist and your crony corporate Goldman Sachs warmonger, okay? But in this regard, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll rag on her, I'll rag on Trump, I'll rag on whoever, but okay, I, I, I agree with this. I think it's important and I can respect someone who's trying to give a calm and, and, and more nuanced approach to, to this problem. It wasn't the first time the former Secretary of State has shown hesitance on, the tra on transgender issues. She expressed skepticism when asked last month if a man with a beard and female organs could be, uh, uh, I'm sorry, with a beard and male organs could be a woman, calling it a very big generational discussion. You got that right. If Hillary Clinton's words on transgender issues in October were off the cuff and spontaneous, her words to the BBC today were not, British writer James Kirkup argued in The Spectator magazine. She's chosen to state clearly that there are indeed legitimate concerns about the way transgender issues relate to women's and their women and their lives. Clinton on Tuesday also declined to rule out running for president. Oh, here we go. Of course, you can't have a story without mentioning Hillary Clinton might run for president. She refused to rule it out, saying, as I say, never, never, never say never. She said in another BBC interview, I will certainly tell you I'm under enormous pressure from many, many, many people to think about it. But as of this moment, sitting here in this studio talking to you, that is absolutely not in my plans. Okay, here's what's going to happen. Trump impeachment thing's going to happen. They're going to fail. And then the Democrat, so check it out, check it out. In my main video, I mentioned that the impeachment trial will restrict all of these other candidates because they're in Senate. They got to be jurors on the trial, right? They're not going to be campaigning as much while that's going on. It could be what, six weeks? Well, then you get the bad news. Maybe Biden drops out. Maybe his polls are dropping. So Hillary says, with all of this stuff going on, I have no choice. And she enters the race. I don't know, though. I mean, that would be nuts. We'll see. And I got to say, I think she could win. I really do. Especially now. The Democrat strategy is negative uh, partisanship. And Hillary Clinton lost some areas by only a few votes. Now, I get it. Trump did win by like something like 70 electoral votes, I think. But I do think if you underestimate her, she can win. And that, that's a word of warning to everybody who, who doesn't like her or who likes Trump. Don't, don't fall for the same trap she did. They all thought she was going to win. They all laughed and cheered. Hey, man, never underestimate your opponent. 
But this video is not about Hillary running for office. It's about transgender issues and what Hillary Clinton is saying. So let's read more. The Daily Caller ends by saying, every Democratic presidential frontrunner supports a bill that would force schools to include male athletes who identify as transgender girls on female sports teams. And that's true. We have another story here from the Daily Caller. It says just 29% of Americans support allowing biological males on girls' sports team. A Democratic bill would require it. I believe they're referring to the Equality Act. Is that what they're referring to? Well, I don't know if they say, but let me, let me, let me tell you something. A lot of people are going to argue, because I've read these articles. I've talked about this many times. They say, if a person transitions and is off testosterone, taking blockers and taking hormones, they have lost their advantage. That is not true. That is factually incorrect and will always be incorrect. And there is nothing you can do to stop it. Here's the thing. If, you, if someone goes through male puberty, no amount of therapy, no amount of t- testosterone suppression will change the fact that they have narrower, narrower hips. So when it comes to a lot of, uh, so w- uh, when it comes to sports, women are more prone to ankle, knee, and leg injuries because of something, something called the Q angle. From the hips, the, the femur goes like this, and then, you know, it goes down. So skateboarding is a really good example. There's also, there's also a center of gravity differences where men, male center of gravity is a bit higher. Even if they switch, even if men start taking different hormones and blockers, their center of gravity, broad shoulders and upper body muscle mass will not change all that much. So these things are major factors, bone density, muscle mass, collagen, they all will still be there. So I, I've heard from a million people saying, oh, no, 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 listen, 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 man. This is not meant to be disrespectful in any, any regard. I am talking about an issue right now in terms of protecting the civil rights of women. And this is the big challenge in having this conversation because they'll accuse you of being a transphobe for saying this. So are you a misogynist? If you don't, if you don't protect biological females, then you're a misogynist. So which one? Is it impossible to talk about on on YouTube because YouTube will ban me no matter what? No, let me say this. I fully respect and support the rights of all individuals. And my goal here is to make sure that biological females as well as trans individuals are placed on, you know, into a, a fair standard that protects both groups. And simply placing biological males who have transitioned to compete alongside biological females does not a fair sport create. What we would need to do is potentially make a transgender, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, I guess league, right? Depending on the various different sports, there will be divisions for, for trans individuals. And that probably makes more sense for a couple of reasons. A female, someone who was born female and transitions to male, who now has the testosterone, is going to be at an advantage compared to biological females. But a biological male who takes hormones will be at a disadvantage to biological males. But perhaps there is like an overlap between trans men and trans women. So a trans division may be the fairest and best because then trans people will get their own league to compete fairly with no, you know, then then who's going to be able to complain, right? You're not going to get any left, right or whatever. You're going to have your own league. Okay. And then you compete, set your own records and no one can take that away from you. The challenge now is that biological females are physically at a disadvantage in almost every capacity. There are certain sports where that might not be the case, but for the most part, it is. And I always explain to people like NFL, NBA, etc. My understanding is there's no rule saying women can't compete. They just don't qualify. So this is a story that, that, that elaborates on this. And, and the reason I bring this up is not because I, I really you know, wanted to do a segment on the trans issues, but I thought it was interesting that Hillary Clinton was willing to bring this up and she doesn't really have fear that she's going to get ripped apart for it. And she probably will. And so will I for just agreeing with her. But she's right. There's legitimate concerns. Check it out. They say a majority of Americans, 51% oppose, excuse me, allowing biologically male athletes who identify as transgender onto girls' sports teams, according to a Resmussen survey released Friday. 57% of black Americans, a key voting demographic for Democrats, told Rasmussen they oppose male athletes in girls' sports. Just 29% of Americans said they favor allowing male athletes onto girls' athletic teams, while another 20% said said they aren't sure. I can respect those who aren't sure, but I think facts matter. The science matters. And the easiest way to describe it is if you take the, uh, if if you tell everyone in a room to line up from tallest to shortest, you're going to get male to female with some mix in between, some taller females, and there may be some anomalous, you know, really tall females. But then if you take any one of these males, uh, uh, and I, I, can't, I can't tell you on average, but many of them, and then transition, they will still likely be tall and show male characteristics. 
One of the biggest problems I think we have in social justice, particularly with the LGBT community and the trans community, is a propensity for people to lie to each other, in my opinion, to try and protect the feelings of those they, they think are vulnerable. I think this is to an extent commendable, but I think it pre- presents people with a world of false expectations. If there is someone who is visibly biologically male, I'm sorry, I'm not attracted to those features. Yes, if there is a biological female who has very masculine features and broad shoulders, to me, that's not attractive. I, this, this in no way is disrespectful to the individual. You'll just need to find someone who, who would find you attractive, and there, there are going to be many. You know, there's billions of people on this planet. The point I'm making is, it's, well, you know, I, I think you get the point. Um, you, you, you can't make perfect changes. And when someone tells you that you are beautiful and, and, and you know, you're, you're very male, like, here's what I'm trying to say. If you look masculine, even if you have, after transitioning, broad shoulders, tall, you know, Adam's apple, etc., people will tell you online how beautiful you are and all those things because I think they're trying to spare your feelings. And I can respect it. Again, I find it commendable. But in the end, you still will not be the, the same as someone who's biologically female. Now, I think it's fair to point out, just because someone might, doesn't find you attractive doesn't mean all women are attractive. There are plenty of unattractive men and women. So I don't think that's necessarily an issue unique to trans people. I think a concern that we're, we're seeing is now with so many trans activists trying to shut down conversations, conversations like this, even ones in good faith, you can't get a legitimate conversation about what someone can expect. I think that the, 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 the challenge then becomes when you see these people post online and they're looking for validation and they're very, and we'll call it not passing, like it's very obvious you're either female or male, you know, if, if they're trans, people in the comments will all just tell you all these good things because if you don't, you'll get banned. If you tell them the truth, you'll get banned. But what happens to those people then when they have everyone on the internet saying, oh, you, you, you look great, and they go outside of the real world, and they don't get treated that same way? It's not always that way. I'm just saying we have to be careful about just placating people's emotions. Okay, I understand there's vulnerable people. We want to respect and protect them. But we also can do good. We can respect and protect someone by telling them the truth. I'm not saying literally every trans person. I'm just saying I don't care if, you know, your mom tells you you're the, you're the most handsome boy in school. Probably not true. OK, take that into consideration. What we're seeing now with sports is the real physical, tangible results of people saying, don't worry, we'll let you do whatever you want. I'm sorry. If we want to protect the rights of everyone, including females, we have to recognize we are taking their rights away by making them compete against biological males in any circumstance. Well, in most circumstances, I'll leave it there. I got a couple more segments coming up in a few minutes. Stick around and I will see you all shortly.